Okay, what's up everyone? Goldie here, and I'm going to be going over the uh, the early slate here on Saturday. I'll try and get the get one up for the main slate as well later on. But uh, another slit slit split slate um, here as we're kind of closing out week one ish. Um, a lot of these teams still playing kind of their uh, their opening home series, and naturally on Saturdays we uh, we have split slates quite a bit. So um, interesting interesting targets here today. I think I've uh, got Ladolo and Bailey Falter on the mound in Philly. Uh, haven't seen the Reds um, on a main slate in a while. If memory serves, um, they do their early afternoon shenanigans and um, this is probably going to be pretty typical for the Reds all season, so not going to be uh, too many opportunities to play them. So uh, I think against Bailey Falter, we might want to jump on uh, with them here. They can they can get pretty right-handed heavy. I've seen some price bumps on the Reds, but uh, we'll get into those details here shortly. Bailey Falter, eh, we'll see. Um, Texas and the Cubs. Also, I haven't seen a lot of the Cubs. Uh, we do get Justin Steele again. Last time he was on the main... Um, he shoved pretty good, and we might be able to target him once more. Martin Perez on the other side, maybe an interesting tournament play there. Not a whole lot of upside for Martin in general, but uh, perhaps uh, some a, a little bit of price value here just at uh, 7300 I believe. Um, and 21% ownership, so not getting totally ignored, which is what we really like to see with Martin Perez. But he can run deep into a game, so it could be some value there. Casey and San Francisco continuing their series. Warm in San Francisco today. Warm-ish, I suppose. Uh, 60 degrees, and and it's a day game. As we talked about yesterday, we might be able to squeeze a little bit of offensive value uh, out of a day game here. Kansas City probably going to be uh, a little bit popular against Manaya. We've been able to stack Manaya, stack against Manaya, rather, uh, for a little while now. He's having trouble throwing strikes, and when he does throw it over the plate, it gets hit pretty hard by right-handers. So, um, and lefties as well. I mean, I think there could be uh, some value on the Royals here today. Maybe some on Brady Singer as well. Yeah, we'll see. Um, could also potentially get to San Francisco again if they're if they're not very popular. Miami and the Mets. I uh, don't think we're going to be dealing with uh, Trevor Rogers here against the Mets. Um, he does not project to have a, a very good day here. Projection systems across the industry really not liking him uh, at the outset either. So um, Mets may be starting to heat up a little bit. And you saw Starling Marte get into a ball yesterday. Pete Alonso's hit... He's got three jacks in his last three games. Um, Frankie Lindor getting on base a lot also hit one out yesterday as well. So um, could be some some value here on the Mets offense. Uh, Oakland and Tampa. Tampa's undefeated, and they get Jeff Springs on the mound, who has been fantastic to start the year. Uh, Shintaro Fuji, Nami uh, for the Oakland Athletics. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he got he got torched in his first outing. So. Um, now with, with Tampa, I mean, Tampa's not going to win 162 games. So does, it, does that mean at 6,200, uh, do we want to be targeting Fuji? Now he's got okay stuff. Uh, probably not though. The strikeout stuff, probably not going to be there, uh, in aggregate over here in the bigs. Um, so maybe we could also get to some more Tampa, but they're, uh, they're back home and you're going to want to get to full stacks. Now against righties. Uh, Tampa may be a little bit weaker, I think. Uh, against lefties, they're going to be pretty dangerous. Uh, that doesn't mean that with a guy that's probably going to be throwing uh, a good few strikes that we can't get to Tampa. Uh, this is a good baseball team down there. Boston and Detroit. Boston gets Joey Wentz. Boston's been off to a good start this season. And Joey Wentz probably pretty attackable here in what is actually a, a smaller field. In Detroit, they brought the fences in and reworked things a little bit to try and boost offense a little bit. Um, on the other side, Tanner Hawk for the Red Sox on the mound. Uh, he gets Detroit, might also see some ownership uh, on Hawk. Really not a ton, though. It's okay. Uh, we'll get into it. Um, that said, we've got the uh, projections and the ownership pushed to the side already for the early slate, at least, uh, here this morning. So peruse those at your leisure, 
and um, you know naturally we're seeing a lot of ownership on Springs and Lodolo coming in. Justin Steele, of course, too. So it might be a little bit of value on Steele at a pretty decent price tag here. Generally don't like going after Texas with left-handers, but Steele's got some pretty good whiff stuff. So I think you could play him. Once again, a short slate, so you can do, well, pretty much anything that you want. Um, I think there's some pretty obvious spots, maybe some that we can pivot to as well. So that said, let's just uh, let's get into the games here. Um, right off the bat, we've got the Reds and the Phillies. Lodolo uh, going for the Red Legs, 8,300. Median projection maybe seems a little bit stiff here. Um, he does have a 30% strikeout rate. It throws a hell of a lot of strikes and keeps the ball on the ground. The yeah, 9% barrel rate, give or take. Um, I mean, it, it's not like a fantastic number. It's not a terribly awful number either. Uh, but the suppression metrics are, are really strong here. 80% strand rate. It's because he's got such good strikeout stuff. Anybody that he is letting on base, two righties in particular, uh, yielding a 254 average, 344 woba, and a buck 70 iso. Though he's stranding those guys at a pretty healthy clip because he's get, he's still getting ground balls. You know, buck 25 ground ball to fly ball, two righties, high ground ball to fly ball rate. Uh, ratio rather uh, against lefties so we don't want to be targeting any of the lefties that puts uh kyle schwarber out of play he's 5200 today not sure you want to be playing him necessarily anyway um some of the righties however like a trade turner this is their list from yesterday obviously um and it did i mean trades at 5700 now getting a little stiff but uh you know, Trey is Trey, and we know that, uh, I mean, we saw in the Classic, for example, you know, he can, when he starts seeing the baseball, um, he's got a lot of pop. Also, plenty of speed will be stealing if he can get on base. So, um, JTR got into a ball yesterday at 4900 I think these prices in general for the Phillies probably elevated and not something we want to be targeting um, against Lodolo in general. Once again, high strikeout stuff, uh, really to both sides of the plate. A little bit more vulnerable to the left side, as I mentioned, with the 170 ISO allowed. So, 12% uh, swinging strike rate for him keeps him above with uh, above 30% in the CSW with a 17.5% called strike. So, uh, everything looks great. Not a lot of hard contact, really, to speak of. A little bit more to the right side, of course, 32% in the pitch info. Uh, it's not alarming, but it is north of 30. So, um, you know, maybe something we quickly take note of. But uh, all the other numbers are, are great for Lodolo. So it's understandable that he's seeing a, a good bit of ownership here. But once again, I think the projection uh, in aggregate may be a little bit high uh, in this particular matchup because the Phillies... Uh, last year, split adjusted against left-handers, struck out at just a 23% clip, give or take, created at a 115 WRC plus with a 164 ISO. So um, good numbers for the Phillies against lefties, of course. And, you know, Lodolo, that, that's definitely the um, the downside of the split for him. So um, if you want to get to a righty or two, Nick Castellanos, maybe... I mean, starting to get on base and see the baseball a little bit more has always made a lot of hard contact, has Castellanos. Um, he could make it cheaper for you. Alec Bohm, 4,100. Seen a price bump recently, but uh, hits lefties pretty well as well. So um, reasonable on a six-game slate if you want to get off of some of the ownership. Maybe play a, a one-off uh, against Lodolo. think it's okay, um, but really would probably target one of the guys that doesn't strike out a whole hell of a lot uh, against the left side. Bailey Falter on the other side uh, for the Phillies, 6,800 on the mound. Um, interesting price tag here against the Reds. Now, just a 21% aggregate strikeout rate for Falter. Uh, fine suppression metrics, back end of this other rotation type of starter um, kind of guy. Has a four-seamer sinker combo that he really relies on to a good you know, near 65% clip, just about, and then throws a slider and a curveball. Now, it does mix in and kind of a show-me change. It's just, you know, 4% of the arsenal. Not very good because uh, it's really kind of floating it over the middle of the plate, and that yields a lot of power to right-handers. So, um, you know, fine slider, but nothing to write home about. Really not a lot of velocity out of falter, though. So, when we, uh, when we 
get Falter on the mound, we want to play some righties against him, and, I, and that's why I, I think we can get to the, some of the reds here. 276 average allowed to righties, 353 Wobo, and a 220 ISO. Just the 20% strikeout rate, 1.8 homers per nine to the right side. 080 ground ball to fly ball. It's kind of a big number. And in Philly, small ballpark over here at Citizens Bank, that's not really a good recipe with some with an elevated barrel rate for sure at uh, at about 9%. I mean, it's the same as Lodolo's, but you know, not a horrible rate, but usually one of the higher numbers you're going to see, um, and certainly on a six-game slate. So I think we can target some of the Reds. Um, initial runs on Cincinnati, ownership-wise, coming in pretty light. That's probably because Johnny Indy is up to 5,500 now. Uh, a little stiff there for him, but... Um, Naturally, you'll see some ownership on like a Tyler Stevenson buying the plate uh, first and catcher eligibility, 4700 stiff price tag for him for sure. But Will Myers, Spencer Steer, Stuart Fairchild types of guys uh, at 3400 3600 and 2400 all respectively um, make that make the price tags of India and Tyler Stevenson uh, far more attainable. So if you want to get to some stacks of the Reds, think it's fine. Uh, we'll see what kind of lefties they run out in the lineup today. Probably not too many might stick somebody like a TJ Friedel or even a Jake Fraley down at the bottom of the list. Fraley up to 5,000, so I don't think you're playing him pretty much ever. Um, now, that said, if you do want to mix in a lefty or two, it's fine because Bailey Falter will still, with a lack of velocity, throw it over the middle of the plate a little bit to the left side. 171 ISO uh, to lefties as well. About a 24% K rate to the left side, so... Uh, definitely better against uh, same-handed hitters, but um, you know, still not totally uh, invulnerable, I suppose. Um, so I think we can get to the some of the Reds here. Would prefer just R Lodolo and the Reds, but you can mix in a a cheap um, Phillies piece uh, from the from their offense there if you want to uh, get off of some of the Lodolo ownership. Okay, moving on, Texas and the Cubs. Um, excited to get Texas back on the slate, and certainly against lefties. I really like playing them last season against lefties. Uh, sneaky good, even though they strike out a little bit. Uh, 183 ISO and a uh, buck 12 uh, WRC plus against left side, which is one of the better numbers in the league. 325 Woba, solid walk rate, 8%, and you know made a good bit of hard contact north of 30% in aggregate as a team. So um, pretty attackable with uh, – it, it was Texas uh, with um, a, a good bit of their righties, Marcus Semien, uh, Dolis Garcia, of course. Corey Seager is a fantastic hitter. He hits both sides. Nate Lowe hits lefties really well as well. Um, Josh Young, young piece for them at, at third base, really starting to come into his own, getting regular playing time. He's in there every day now. He's just 3400 today. I think this is a pretty decent price if you want to get off of some of this, the Justin Steele over here. We'll get to him in a sec. Really good arm, and Texas is, of course, going to strike out, but I think you could maybe mix in some of the, the righty uh, Rangers bats. Um, but we, we skipped over Martin Perez. 7300 for Martin today. He had a really good season last year, suppressed really well, sub-3 ERA, but an XFIP at about 380. So we might see a little bit of regression coming to him in the latter part of his career. Um, really has been fantastic as far as the Arsenal goes over the last several seasons, which has really kept him in a rotation. Never had a whole lot of upside. Um, he was a, a pretty significant... Uh, fly ball pitcher earlier in his career, but has introduced the cutter, and that basic that dramatically shifted his batted ball profile, allowed to a, a heavy ground ball split, um, and it's made it. I mean, that Martin Perez was always kind of difficult to stack against, but uh, it's made it even worse now because he gets you know a full 1.7 ground balls to fly ball here, throws strikes still. And isn't going to blow it by you necessarily, but does not give up any power whatsoever. Last season, 075 ISO to lefties and an 099 ISO to righties. Just fantastic suppression metrics. Um, high ground ball rate, as I mentioned, to both sides of the plate. And a lot of soft contact induced from the left side, definitely. Less so to the righties, just 13.5%. But uh, that doesn't really translate to hard contact. 
Hard contact at, to lefties, of course, very low still, 21%, 27% to righties. So really, really strong there. Stays off of the barrel as he always has, which made him frustrating to stack against even when he was getting a lot more fly balls. But um, power numbers and suppression numbers are really, really good. So 21% ownership here against the Cubs. Now, against lefties, they're probably going to be a little bit better this season. They've got Nico up at the top of the list, who is not going to strike out. Dansby, of course, hits lefties very well, but uh, Dansby, 5,800. I don't know about that. Uh, Ian Happ, 5,200. Very expensive. Does hit from the right side, but we prefer him from the left side a little bit more. Cody Bellinger stinks. 3,200. He might not even play uh, against a lefty, or if he does, um, I mean, you're probably not going to be including him in any Cubs stacks that you may get to. Trey Mancini, 3,100, does make the top few guys a little bit more attainable. Uh, Patty Wisdom, still very, very expensive. He's been this way since he went on a little bit of a heater maybe mid-last summer, but his price really hasn't budged, and I think he's uh, pretty well overpriced. Um, not super interested in, in getting to the Cubs today. They've got a sub-four implied run total uh, as well in Chicago. And weather-wise, um, it did really nothing to speak of. Should be a good day for baseball in Chicago. About 60 degrees, no real wind or anything. So, uh, But two good arms on the mound here. Justin Steele on the other side, 76 for him, seeing about uh, 29% ownership. Um, the projections on both of these guys, 16 points, give or take, look look about uh, respectable here. Um with an elevated ownership on Justin Steele and just a 25% K rate. I know it's very, very high against lefties, 31%. He's elite against the left side of the plate. So probably, despite the fact that Corey Seager and Nate Lowe hit lefties pretty well, probably want to stay off of them, I think, a little bit today. Uh, a lot of ground balls. Does walk them a little bit. So if he is walking some of the lefties at this 12% clip, um, that's really his only vulnerability is a is an elevated walk rate. Sub 60% strike one, but still suppresses because he's got uh, a, a pretty workable arsenal, right? Uh, a few different pitches here, four-seamer sinker combo, throwing it about 60, 65%, give or take, then a really good slider. And that um, keeps him out of trouble against lefties for sure, but uh, suppresses contact to the right side too when he can bury it. So 23.5% strikeout rate to the right side, just a 106 ISO. So we don't really want to be targeting him in general. Um, we like playing steel because he's got really good stuff. And a 7,600, rather, I think it's a pretty attainable price tag for him. And you can mix in some steel to your tournament teams today. Um, you can maybe even consider playing him in cash because, once again, Texas is going to strike out. Last season, split adjusted. Despite the power, 23% aggregate K rate with some ground balls at about a buck 22 ground ball to fly ball ratio. So, um, steals get gets heavy, heavy ground balls, and ground ball hitters against ground ball pitchers is not a recipe for fantasy point production in general. So, good spot for steel as well. Like I said, on the other side with Martin Perez, I think you play Perez at 7,300 reduced price tag and reduced ownership. Um, I think the spot is is pretty okay for him also. Of course, uh, we'd like to chase an extra 5%, uh, 4% in, in raw K rate between the two and get to steal instead for just an extra 300. But um, if we can't make it work, I think Martin Perez is a viable option. Um, if you want to get to some stacks, I do think some shorter stacks, uh, definitely of Texas, are, are viable. And perhaps of the Cubs as well, the pricing makes it a little bit prohibitive there. Moving on, Kansas City and the Giants. Um, Brady Singer on the mound for the Royals. This could be an okay spot for Singer today. Um, pretty standard split here for him. Sinker-slider combo. Mostly just a two-pitch guy. And, you know, mixes in a change. It, it's not a great change. It's only about a, what do we have, six and a half, seven mile an hour velo delta off of the sinker. And we'd want to see that a little bit higher. That would probably help neutralize some more of the power, decrease the spin rate. Uh, we want to see the, the velo delta higher, that is. Uh, and we want to see the change of velocity compared to the sinker 
down probably at about uh, 83, 84 or so. And that would allow him to neutralize some of the power that he does give up. It's not so much in batting average. It's just kind of in extra base hits. And he'll give up a dinger every now and then. 13.5% homer to fly ball rate for Singer. Um, hard contact to lefties, really worrisome, actually. 43.5%. It's a big, big number. And that's how we'd want to attack. With the Giants, they're going to be heavy, heavy from the left side. And Singer's got a 160 ground ball to fly ball rate, just 120 ground ball to fly ball rate to lefties, however. And, of course, we know that the Giants are going to hit the baseball in the air. So a lot of guys over here, Lamont Wade, Conforto, Jock, Yastrzemski, uh, Blake Sable down at the bottom of the list catching. They Brandon Crawford can still lift. They will all hit... Uh, you know, from the left side and could make it a little bit difficult on Brady Singer. So at 8,800 today, he is just seeing about a 10% ownership market, not really high on him today. And I kind of agree at this price tag. I think a good bit of the upside is priced out. Now that said, the Giants will strike out split adjusted last season. They struck out at a 25% clip. And that's a big, big number, even though they did hit uh, a, a good bit of fly balls last season at an 090 ground ball to fly ball ratio marginal power numbers and a 166 ISO and a 315 Woba. So nothing too outsized to speak of there necessarily for the Giants, but we saw when they get a decent batted ball matchup against somebody that's going to throw it over the plate and Singer here, he's really only got the two good pitches, sinker slider, weak changeup. Um, the lefties could very well feast on somebody uh, like a Brady Singer, as they did Lance Lynn the other day. Uh, Sean Manaya on the other side for, for the Giants, I mean, he's having a lot of trouble throwing strikes, man. His, his, his wind-up, his mechanics look terrible. He looks all out of sorts, and he has really ever since early the early part of last season. And um, he's really kind of gotten out of whack. So throwing the, the sinker still, and it's a uh, just at 91, 92. When he can throw it over the plate, it's getting tattooed by right-handers. 274 average, 352 woba, and a 226 ISO in aggregate. Does have a little bit of swing and miss still, with a slightly above average K rate at 24% to the right side. But it's translating those power numbers into a 1.9 homers per nine. This is a big number, with an 090 ground ball to fly ball here for him as well two righties so I think we can get to some Royals they've been very disappointing as they usually are but um you know the MJs and the Masseys they might not I mean this is their lineup uh from yesterday they're not gonna be at the top of the list you'll see a Bobby Witt Salvi will be in there who hit a bomb yesterday uh Vinny Pascantino actually got there against Alex Cobb yesterday he'll still be in the list but Probably generally don't want to be targeting lefties. You could st add him to a stack as well, because if Manaya's throwing just meatballs up there at 91, then it, it, he's not able to spot the sinker, uh, can't throw the slider or the changeup for a strike. He's going to struggle against both sides of the plate. So you could mix in, if you're stacking the Royals, some of the lefties as well. Probably no on the Kyle Isbell. Um, we want to play him mostly against righties and some ground ball pitchers, but Hunter Dozier is a very cheap price tag here, 2300 very attainable. Matt Duffy will probably be in the list uh, against a, a lefty. They've been playing him at the in the five hole. Uh, 3800 not crazy about that price tag, but uh, you can get to some of the righties here for sure. Um, Salvi, I do like pretty much always against, against a lefty. He hits a lot of fly balls, um, and the ground ball to fly ball ratio for Manaya not terribly outsized and heavy, to, uh, toward the fly ball lean, right? So it uh, doesn't mean it's a bad batted ball matchup for Salvi, and it's Salvi. Uh, he, he should be fine. Um, Bobby Witt I do like here as well. See if we can get him over to second base. Maybe see if he can um, start providing some stolen base value by stealing third as well. So uh, I like the Royals here a little bit. Not so much on Brady Singer. I think we can get to some offense here in the the day game uh, in San Francisco. All right. Miami and the Mets, uh, as we alluded to at the outset, Trevor Rogers. Uh, we're not going to be targeting him. Definitely not against the Mets. Uh, Mets don't strike out, and they're starting to warm up here. 
their righties look healthy. Uh, Pete Alonzo and uh, Starling Marte. Frankie obviously hits from the right side, of course. Tommy Pham they have. Um, they've got Eddie Escobar hits from the right side. Tomas Nito behind the plate. It's not a total zero. He's close to it. But, um, you know, Brandon Nimmo is kind of a pest at the top of the lineup if they lead him off. Uh, he walked five times yesterday, or four times yesterday. Um, so, really, really sticky lineup. This is a patient team over here, and they could be very dangerous against a guy, Trevor Rogers, that has problem with right-handers. Gives up a full 294 average, 379 wobe, and a 221 ice out of the right side. 20% K rate, 1.6 homers per nine. Effectively neutral ground ball to fly ball. Uh, bad four-seamer at, at 95 from the left side for Trevor and really a very marginal changeup. Good velo delta there, but if the four seamer's bad, changeup's going to be bad. Sliders also very marginal also. Um so even against lefties, like that will play up a little bit, play up the K rate that is. Um but really not terribly useful uh against righties if he can't bury it down to the back foot. Uh, which is really what you'd like to see for a lefty that's really only got the three pitches and two of them being the fastball and the changeup are not very good. you got to have some way to get righties out, and he just doesn't have it. So that's what's uh, causing the 221 ISO here. He's off the barrel, but again, to the right side, of an effectively neutral ground ball to fly ball. So we can certainly get to him with some of the Mets. I'd, I'd like them a good bit. They're seeing about... Oh, I don't know, 12% ownership. But you can get very different with them with some of the guys down at the bottom of the lineup. Kodai Senga on the other side, um, just five and a third in his first start, but he was very good. And looks like he displayed four pitches with the four-seamer through the cutter, got some gas at 97 on the four-seamer, and then threw a split as well um, when he was really burying this pitch. Uh, he was getting a a good few swings and misses. Um, In aggregate, just in his first start, at at 11% swing strike rate, a lot of called strikes because, um, you know, a lot of guys haven't seen him yet. So it's going to keep the CSW high until the league gets a a little bit more familiar with him. But, um, you know, very encouraging, and we're naturally seeing the ownership on him spike a little bit. Of course, it's a uh, a, just a six-gamer here, and I think he was on – in his last start, it was a it was a full 10 or 11 game main slate. Uh, nevertheless, he is leading the way in price tag on the mound today. Seems like a fine aggregate projection. Marlins, even though they've got Luis Arise and and a Gene Segura in the lineup, they've been striking out a crap load uh, to start the season here. Very very high strikeout rate in aggregate. Um, now last year they did strike out at a Pretty healthy clip, of course. Georgie Soler and Garrett Cooper, they're going to strike out. Jazzy will strike out. Plenty of pop, though, uh, from the left side against righties. Hits hits righties very, very well. So expensive. Not sure we want to be going out of our way to target Jazzy today at 5,300. A little aggressive there. But Georgie Soler, 4,100. Garrett Cooper got a lot of pop here. Looks healthy early in the season. Um, has pop as well. Like, I'm not sure we want to target any righties necessarily with a good splitter from Kodai Senga. Probably something we want to avoid. So I think we can target him at just 22, 23% ownership on him right now uh, against the Marlins. Like I said, they've been striking out a a lot here. And I think this is a a fine tournament play. Um, You could even consider playing him in cash given that the Marlins have been so bad. So like the like the Mets a good bit here. And in the betting markets, let's check. Uh, where are they? Yeah, you got to lay about a you know nine to five on them, dollar eighty or so. Uh, right now seems okay. 50, 55 degrees in New York today. Um, I do love playing Luis Arise in general, and even if Kodai Sango's got a good splitter, um, Arise probably still not going to strike out. So if you want to play uh, any part of the the Marlins in this in this game. I think the the best piece, the two best pieces are definitely Arise and Jazzy. Uh but sp- like numbers adjusted uh I and definitely price adjusted. I I'd, I'd much prefer Luis Arise rather than Jazzy at 5300. So, um that's probably it for me from the Marlins. 
and mostly just uh, just like the Mets, definitely the Mets righties. I think you can full stack here. You can correlate. Uh, you can you can do pretty much anything you want there. All right, uh, Oakland and Tampa. Uh, Shitaro Fujinami on the mound. As I mentioned, he got uh, he he got beat up pretty good in his first start. Just uh, just went two and a third. Um, was it against the Angels? I think it may have been. In any case, he got he got torched. Uh, was on the barrel a lot. Of course, these numbers here very noisy. Can't really take too much stock into anything. Um, you know, only saw what did we see? 15 hitters. Did throw strike one. That is one of the few numbers in very short samples that will converge quicker, or the quickest, I suppose. Um, strike one. You know, uh, you're you're throwing the first pitch to every single hitter you you face, and uh, it it's a pretty solid metric to get an idea as to where he is uh, just throwing strikes. And so he was throwing strikes, and, and that's good. Uh, it was the, you know, deeper in the count that kind of got him into trouble. Also, just pitched to it a lot of contact. 6,200, we could eventually expect a bounce from Fujinami. Um, today against the Rays, I'm not sure we want to be targeting that. They split adjusted last season, created at a very high clip. Just a 21% aggregate K rate. Not a whole lot of power, necessarily, to speak of. Sub-150 ISO at 146. 317 Woba. Um, but very opportunistic in, in driving runners in. When they did get runners on, they capitalized. Uh, so very, still a really good baseball team down here in Tampa. And difficult to target in general. Now, it is a... I'm going to mention this. Uh, once again, we saw yesterday the... Uh, let's see who was it. Mackenzie Gore go off a little bit against the Rockies once again. Um, you know these cheaper pitchers, they they have outs. You know these guys aren't total zeros on the mound. You can't just blindly stack against them necessarily every day because you're going to get blasted one of these times. But um, you know that did not prove true for Jose Arrania, for example. Uh, nevertheless, 6,200 for Fujinami here. Eventually, I think we're going to be able to target him. Probably not the spot here today against the Rays. Uh, they've been seeing the baseball really top to bottom here, one to nine, and it's going to make them hard to target uh, in general. Of course, Yandy doesn't strike out at the top of the lineup. He's 4,800 now. Like, let's kind of slow down maybe. Uh, Wander 5,400, and this is probably where he should be uh, when he starts hitting consistently uh, and when he's healthy. Um, this is probably where he's going to be most of the season because he does obviously have uh, some bag upside. Isak Paredes, he's got a hell of a lot of pop. It makes these two guys at the top more uh, more attainable. Isak probably against a righty, not going to be in the three-hole, however. Probably see uh, some Brandon Lau. Um, hopefully with a, a day or two off, Brandon Lau's had a chance to clear his head. He's been terrible, so I uh, would like to see him get going a little bit. Randy's going to be in there every day. 5,900 for Randy. He's going to steal, but sheesh, um, 59 for Randy. Probably a bit aggressive, and we're, as of right now, seeing uh, anywhere from 18 to 20% ownership in aggregate on the raise for the early slate here. So um, perhaps a bit stiff in that department, but uh, I think in, if you're building tournament teams, definitely don't fade Tampa. Uh, they're going to probably be putting together some really good ABs against Fujinami over here. Springs on the mound for the Rays, 8,500, leading the way in chalk, 44% uh, ownership right now. Um, aggregate projection of 20 points, or median projection, I should say, maybe just a little high. Whenever we crack this 20-point number, I start to uh, start to cringe a little bit. Um, that said, Oakland is still... They're still Oakland. There's not a whole lot of upside from them. But last season, against lefties at least, they were sticky. Uh, not that they created, you know, just an 88 WRC plus and a 130 ISO, 282 Woba, but they didn't strike out. And that's what we might need here from Springs. Now, they're going to platoon against him. And unfortunately for Oakland... Uh, Jeff Springs is actually a, a reverse split, and he's more vulnerable to the left side. So we'll see what they do as far as lefties. Uh, Ryan Noda might be in the list for them today. They moved him all the way up to the two-hole yesterday. Um, really strong. Seth Brown probably be in there as well. We'll see. Esteri Ruiz, he may actually lead off, though, um, from the right side of the plate. So 
they're going to try and throw, as does Oakland pretty much all the time, uh, a bunch of righties and, and platoon uh, as best they can, just kind of play numbers. Uh, however, we got a you know 140 inning sample on Jeff Springs, and his splits are, are pretty significant uh, in favor for him at least uh, to the right side. So uh, 208 average, 250 woba, 105 ISO to righties, 29% K rate, really really strong there. So you can definitely target him at 8500. Probably, I mean it's definitely your your cash SP1, um, and the arsenal looks great. You know, nothing really to speak of in terms of worrisome numbers for Springs here. And as long as they don't run out a uh, lineup full of lefties, uh, I think we can we can get to a lot of Springs. Uh, probably no athletics here for me, but it's a six-game slate. And if you want to stack against the most popular pitcher or just take a one-off, Jesus Aguilar, who doesn't strike out, uh, or something like that, I think it's reasonable. Um, but probably not too much here. Uh, I mean, Shea, he's got pop, but he's going to be down at the bottom of the list and um, really don't want to be targeting Jeff Springs all that often. So um, let's just move on to the final game, Boston and the Tigers, 7,100 on the mound for Tanner Hawk. Um, 23% K rate about average. Can't throw strike one, however. He has come out of the bullpen, and that's been his real problem. 50%, 51% first pitch strike rate, I, that's terrible. I have no idea how the walk rate is only 8.5%. Uh, it's really just because he's got a very good slider. So, unfortunately, the four-seamer is bad. He's got some velocity, you know, at 95 plus, but you know, the sinker-slider combo is where he really needs to rely. And, unfortunately, the sinker is just a not, not a very good pitch. Uh, against left-handed hitters. So that leads to some power that he gives up, 263 average, 348 Woba, 181 ISO, and a 22% K rate to the left side. Here's where the walk rate really balloons. It's at 12%. So he's really trying to not get blown apart with this this sinker, but he can't spot the four-seamer either uh, against the left side, and it leads to 1.8 homers per nine. So he's got a high ground ball rate, which is nice, but when he gets it in the air, it's going over the wall. So not on the not on the barrel too terribly often, so not sure we want to be targeting a hell of a lot of the Tigers over here. Um, but some some lefties that they can platoon with. Uh, certainly Nick Maton, they'll probably be leading him off. He's 2,600 second and third base eligibility. If you need a punt, there there are worse punts. Uh, Riley Green, he's he's been fine this year at 4,100. I think this is okay as well. And Austin Meadows, 3,100, still has pop, uh, but. Still trying to get a little bit more comfortable uh, since he has dealt with some injuries over the last couple of seasons, some vertigo. Um, so not quite in the swing of things really as Austin Meadows just yet. Kerry Carpenter, good cheap piece as well. 2,800 has some pop too. So we'll see what they do with the lineup. Um, Torque obviously will you know, hit a ball a long, long way whenever he can, he can make contact, but uh, probably stay off of the righties mostly, but I think Detroit might have a little bit of value here against Tanner Hawk if he's going to walk the whole country. They're like a 50% first pitch strike rate and just an 8.5% walk rate is not sustainable. Even though we've got a solid 65 inning sample on him, uh, that's going to normalize. If he's either got to throw more strikes uh, early in the count or the walk rate is going to start to balloon. Uh, it's just it's not possible to maintain this low of a number um, when, if he's in the starting rotation, he's going to likely be seeing more teams platoon against him. So the the righty K rate at 24% and the suppression against righties and the really good walk rate against righties, 6%, uh, that's probably going to flatten out and normalize a little bit once he sees some more lefties. And he's He's pretty weak to lefties, admittedly. So um, not crazy about getting to any Tanner Hawk on the mound at 7,100, but this is Detroit. And with an average K rate, like, you can you can target Detroit and you can go after him. Um, but would be careful with any uh, outsized exposures. Uh, I do like the price, but I really do not like the, the strike one rate. you, you got to get ahead of hitters, uh, otherwise you have no chance even against the hapless Tigers. 6,400 on the mound for uh, the Tigers is Joey Wentz. And 
Median projection, about 11 points for him as well. Seems fine. Boston's been really good this to the you know, first week, week and a half of the season. Um, he also has a little bit of trouble throwing strike one, just 57% first pitch strike rate. We need to see this north of 60 for pretty much everybody. And just a 19% aggregate K rate for Wentz. He's pitching to a lot of contact also. 14% strikeout rate in a small, noisy sample for him uh, against lefties. Just 21% to righties. A slightly larger sample, 28 and two-thirds, 120 hitters. Good suppression as far as average and WOBA go. ISO will will drift upward a little bit. This kid's got good stuff. He's got an okay four-pitch arsenal here. 6,400, I don't think it's the worst tournament play on the slate today. At Because Boston last season against lefty struck out at a 24% clip. They did create, so they've got pop. Guys like uh, Rob Refsnyder leading off here is a pretty decent piece here at uh, 2,200 today. Justin Turner, of course, uh, always hits has hit lefties well. Adam Duvall has been really seeing the baseball this year. Rafi Devers, one of the better hitters in the league, of course. And we don't have much of a sample on Yoshida yet against lefties, so we'll see how he fares. But... Uh, Kike Hernandez always hit lefties as well, so they can they can throw some righties at Joey over here. Um, now he does have a, a pretty decent changeup, just a seven mile an hour velo delta for the change off of the four seamer. So um, we'd like to see that you know jump up a little bit that delta, and that would give him a little bit more value on the change and really be able to suppress right-handed power. Um, now. As I mentioned, the the average and the wool were pretty low against righties, but uh, 160 ISO is starting to creep up there a little. It's not a, a worrisome number by any means, but a 33% hard contact rate to the right side uh, is definitely notable as well, certainly when he's got an 065 ground ball to fly ball to righties. So we got to be careful um, playing too much Joey Wentz here because he'll get it in the air. So if you want some line drive hitters like a Rob Refsnyder, or Kike Hernandez, from the right side, um, against lefties at least, I think those are reasonable plays if you want to just stack Boston. But Joey Wentz is not overly attackable here. Uh, he's got a marginal four-seamer. It's it's about neutral value. It's fine as long as he can spot it and throw strikes with it. Then he can get to a good cutter, a good changeup, and a good curveball. Um, so he's got a workable, workable arsenal to navigate the Red Sox here. I think you could play some of both sides of this game. Um, like the Tigers a little bit in targeting Tanner Hawk here. Uh, you might be able to get them at an okay plus money price in the markets. Don't think it's the worst play in the world, but like, don't get me wrong, we're not running to the window to bet the Tigers. So that's it for the breakdown. Um, let's quickly go over stacks. I like the Reds here a little bit. I think you can play a little bit of maybe some some Texas, but uh, for the most part, just arms on the. Uh, in in Chicago here, uh, like Kansas City, a decent bit. You can play some San Francisco too. See if they can lift a baseball against Brady Singer. Um, like the Mets against uh, Trevor Rogers. Good split adjusted numbers here for New York, and bad split adjusted numbers for Trevor Rogers. Um, you can get to some Tampa too against Fujinami. Not totally sure he's going to provide all that much value for us just yet, and maybe some Tiger stacks if you want. You can close your eyes and. And play the Tigers. It is just a six-game slate, so you can play pretty much everybody once again. Um, but uh, that's kind of where we're 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 sitting right now. Once again, we do have projections pushed to the side already for the early slate. Keep an eye out over the next few hours for updates there as well. Good luck, everybody, if you are punting.